Thank you, TEDx Star, um, for making this event possible. Thank you for making it possible for me to participate. I wasn't quite sure as to whether this would work out. I'm glad it has. Um, so thank you very much, guys. Hi to fellow speakers. I would have loved to have met you today. I read your profiles, was blown away. Um, I arrived five hours after this event is over. So if you're still in Tanzania tomorrow, it would be great to meet you. Um, if not, I'm sure we could correspond over email. Um, ladies and gentlemen, hello. My name is Modesta Lillian Mahiga. And I've actually chosen to talk about what would Nyerere do had he been here. Um, now, imagine with me, if you would, Tanzania, an economic power driven by a confident, professional, altruistic, tenacious, entrepreneurial, patriotic people. I feel that many a times when we say that today, people think, yeah, right, well, it's going to take a while. And I'd like to think, had Mwalim Nyerere been alive today, and he could still speak about Tanzania's welfare, that he could still influence decision makers and have a say about Tanzania's future, I think that is something we would see as a reality and we would embrace. So I believe, had Mwalim Nyerere been alive today, he would single out human resource development as the first and for a very long time only priority in our national development agenda. I've been thinking about this for quite some time. There, we, we can't have technical investment in Tanzania. We can't, we can't have enough money injected in Tanzania. But if our people are not developed, then we're not about to take this show anywhere. Mwalimu said there is no development if it's not people-centered. You've read his books, they say that. You've heard his speeches. He held this so close to him, and I believe it should be dear to the rest of us. But education to him is, is unlike what we experience. Education to him wasn't simply having knowledge or simply having pieces of paper and certification, as he said, it, to, for you to look like you're a possessor of knowledge. Education to him had to be something that would, that would empower you, that would give you the skills with which you would determine your own life, your own future, your own destiny. And so this is what I want to look at today. What Mwalimu would do with the educational system, how Mwalimu would lead about us believing in ourselves and us um, projecting ourselves in, in the business world, um, in this competitive global economy. Um, there are times that I read maybe critiques about Mwalimu and what, and, and, and what Nyerere has done and his legacy in Tanzania. And I think a lot of people actually underestimate just how wise and forward thinking he was on Africa but specifically Tanzania and her place in the world. Mwalimu, yes, actually believed that we must be competitive for us to thrive. Mwalimu understood the tenets of democracy and development a whole lot more than we actually give him credit for. We must be competitive, but in our competing with the rest of the world, in our thriving, um, to, to find our mark in the world. Mwalim also understood that we had to first develop our people for us to be able to fully engage. And it is this that I want to talk about today. I think he'd have three messages for us. And the first message Mwalim would have would actually go to every Tanzanian. I think Mwalim would admonish us. He would say to hold on to everything that happened to you in your past to recount the injustices or um, the interference or the shortcomings of whether it was a government or maybe it was when we were under colonialism or socialism was a crutch. Um, corruption has, has given us a disability. And to focus on these things without at the same time thinking that 
the powers that exist, the systems under which we lived, we created them. Because the honest truth is, Tanzania is only a reflection of Tanzanians' minds. What we're experiencing now is only but what we thought of ourselves and the future we saw for ourselves just a little while before. So whether you believe you can or you can't, you know the old adage. Well, you're right. And so I believe that Mwalimu would say, OK, we have this past. And there's some things that have happened that we could say have influenced where we are. But what role did we play in that? Or where were we when these things were happening? But more importantly, what can we do now? Or what are we doing now to change our lot? such that we can say that, you know, point fingers and say somebody else isn't doing for us, whether it be the donor community or government or regional uh, partners um, or our employers, parents, education system, etc. Mwalimu would say, even looking at developed countries, they have minority groups that are experiencing a lot of problems. Other uh, developed countries in Africa have issues. Developed countries in other emerging markets have, have problems. News flash, no one is shedding a tear. What's most important is what are we going to do, despite our past, to move forward? Because honestly, as Malimu said, men and women can only liberate themselves. They can only develop themselves. They cannot be developed by another, which then goes to say, you cannot be made a victim without your consent. What you have around you is 10% externally imposed, but 90% how you react to what's happened to you. So if you want to experience different for Tanzania, then think and act differently. And by the way, that does not involve leaving the country, because I know every year Africa loses 20,000 people would rather go live elsewhere because they don't like the conditions of life in their country. Tanzania loses hundreds. Do you ever think about the history of these countries that you flock to or that you would rather live in? For instance, let's take, yeah, let's take America for instance. You wouldn't have wanted to live in America 250 years ago as a Tanzanian. A lot of Americans found it very difficult to be in America 250 years ago. But you know what? They stuck it out. They decided this is our country. We're going to determine our own destiny. And we're going to live and leave a legacy. Americans rolled up their sleeves. They went through hardship. They went through tumultuous times. And if you ask them right now, they'll tell you they're still living out the dreams that their founders had. And we look at them and think, whoa, the superpower that's always been there and always done great things. And this is the power of when you choose that this is my country, this is my future, and we will develop and we will stand and compete on our terms. So if you are going to engage, understand that the world is not about to change the rules of engagement because of our past or because we have a sad story. If you engage, then run this race to win. John Aquari which is a pity very few of us celebrate him. He's a Tanzanian that participated in the um, 1968 Olympics in New Mexico. And he fell really within minutes of, um, of the race. And people just asked him to, you know, to, to step aside, but he kept on running. And he finished, I think it was uh, two hours after everybody had left, after the last person had left, and people had gone off to watch another sport. And later, you know, reporters came up to him saying, well, you know, this thing was over. Why did you continue running? And he said, my country didn't send me out here to just participate. My country sent me out here to finish the race. I'd like to challenge you as a Tanzanian. Let's engage in this race. Let's engage globally in these markets. And let's engage to win. The second message that I believe Mwalimu would send is you know, to the macro stakeholders, to the decision makers government and civil society and the private sector and all those that would like to invest in Tanzania. He would set a very clear vision of where he wants to see Tanzania in let's say 50 years time and the steps we would have to take to get there. And he would mandate the stakeholders 
to make sure that in every development agenda they have, in every business investment that they make, that human resource development is topmost in their agenda. But not just to have policies, because we have great policies now, as you all know, but to make sure that the budgets are allocated and the programs are in place, and you know how Mwalimu operated, he would make sure that those activities were implemented. I truly believe that Mwalimu would not just leave development to just happen as it would. Um, for us to see how we would fare you know, in a liberal market, because given our position, well, we're trying to compete with the big dogs you know, while we're still moving with a handicap. So I believe that he would say, yes, by all means, invest in Tanzania, by all means, let's look at other development areas, but topmost is that Tanzanians must be able to stand by themselves. He always said, you know, education for the sake of education really doesn't make sense. It really has to be such that after that, a person stood by themselves. He said, any education that leaves someone with a slave mentality or leaves someone feeling impotent is but an attack on men's minds and women's minds. So to follow on, I would say education as it is right now is an attack on Tanzanians' minds. Mwalimu would make sure, and this is really going into his third message, that it has to be education that transfers skills, skills that help people determine their future, skills that help people see that there are options and for them to choose which option that would be best for them to develop themselves and to take care of the welfare of their family, their society, and this country. What we have now, the caliber of people that we produce now, will not lead to Tanzania and economic power driven by professional, confident, altruistic, entrepreneurial, patriotic people. What we have now is a far cry from that future. We need to stop lying to our youth. It is not enough to have the certificates. It's not enough to have your degree and then you maybe do your master's degree and you accumulate all the certificates and professional qualifications. I am in this business, in training and in recruitment, and sometimes you have someone who is so qualified and is very book smart, but they cannot transfer that to the world of business, to the world of work. Actually, Nyerere said, um, he said, the accumulation of certificates, or rather pieces of paper, just for the sake of accumulation, is a disease. Because then, you know, a person is just a possessor. They use that as a legal tender to show that they have a right to have a place in society. It is time that we groomed Tanzanians to be competitive in this global market, in, to, to, to be competitive in this global village. Um, you know, before people would say, well, I'm not going out there so it doesn't really matter. Well, the world is coming to us here. And so we hear, especially with the attracting of foreign investment, and these are multinationals, they expect top-notch performance standards. They will not compromise because we somehow don't have the system that encourages critical thinking, independent thinking, um, questioning when you don't understand, dissenting when you debate. They don't care that we don't have that because for the investment they're making in our country, they will find the skilled human resource to carry out their business. And so I believe that he would call on all of us to make sure that as we attract foreign investment, which is actually very good, um, great opportunities for business, great opportunities to create jobs, um, great opportunities for us to learn and to also share our culture. As we um, expand greater and, and integrate more in regional economic uh, communities, he would ensure that as much as there are opportunities that we can get from these, we also develop our people such that we can see these opportunities. He said, there is no point in teaching a man to, to sow uh, soybeans 
if you also don't speak about nutrition, but more importantly, what I liked is he said, if you don't show him or teach him about markets or show him where the markets are. So I understand, for instance, that there are opportunities in being more integrated and of course, trading as a block, whether it's the suffering community or SADC or you know, greater Okomesa or other, um, or other regional economic communities, trading as a block is a lot more advantageous to Tanzania than trading, having bilateral agreements with, with, some, uh, with countries. However, if we can't see the opportunities, or rather, if we couldn't compete even with our neighbors, then we're not really helping. We're not really giving Tanzanians opportunities. We're opening Tanzania to other people, for other people to have opportunities. Again, I'm not shunning this. I think it's important, and I think it's about time. However, we need to develop our youth first. How do you look into the eyes of 25,000 students that come out of the tertiary institutions each year? These are the creme de la creme of this country. They, a, a lot of people would graduate, 24, 25, 26, 27 even. People are ready to you know, get their own homes, most people still live with their parents, um, get a job, get married, build a house, whatever. And they go looking for their job and someone is sitting behind a chair, and not because they're discriminating, but simply because it is the truth. And they tell them, I'm sorry, you don't have what it takes for you to get this job. And this is the best we have in the country. How do we look them in the eye and justify having great foreign investment in really um, skilled labor intensive industries, but Tanzanians don't have those skills? or great opportunities to expand into whatever other countries we may have regionally, but um, they're more equipped than us to actually deal with this. I would actually say it's really akin to sending foot soldiers off into some war, armed with machetes, and the enemy comes to you with long range AK-47s. How are we supposed to actually fight fairly not that it is a fight, but you know what I mean, to compete. I believe that had Mwalimu Nyerere been here today, had he seen the state of Tanzania today, had he seen our priorities, and could he influence the educational system? Could he influence budgets? Could he influence people's mindsets? I believe that he would actually overhaul this system. He would overhaul the Tanzanian educational system. But short of that, because we do appreciate that there are measures being taken to move into making education more business friendly, more transferable, more practical. I believe that short of overhauling the educational system, Walimu would supplement it. Walimu would address our mindsets. He would have a stand, believing in ourselves. He would say, you are Tanzanian. Take pride in what you have and who you are. He would say that there is nothing that you need to thrive in life that somebody's going to give to you from outside. And everything that you need, you already have. It's already in you. It's about you knowing what that is, tapping into it, and unleashing it outside. You know, I've been thinking about this because I've been involved in this area for some years now. It really isn't rocket science. Our IQ isn't less from that of people from other countries or of other races. The difference between what they have and how they can perform and where we are really is, is, is socialization. It's the way we've been brought up and conditioned. They believe that they are victors. I will not you know, single out any people or nationality, whatever. Let me just say they, and many of you know who they are. Or you have your own set of they. They actually believe that they, they're, they're victors. And there's some African nationals who Really, you know, they, they have this confidence. They have this, they're very secure in their identity. You often hear, who are you saying that to? I am. 
and they tell you where they're from and who they are. There are people who they may not know where, what the future holds, but they know how dark it, their past was and say, I don't care what I've been through, despite what I've been through. As a matter of fact, because of what I've been through, I am going to forge forward and I'll show you. It is confidence, it is business communication skills, it's having an entrepreneurial spirit where you will risk and you stand and you know where you can't get a job, then you better create one. It's knowing that whatever future that you see for Tanzania, it's not going to happen if Tanzanians don't create it. It is not waiting for government to do, donor partners to bring. There is nothing that could come from without that will make lasting changes in Tanzania. I actually believe right now we have that generation. We're developing a different crop of Tanzanians right now. It's people who say, you know what, yes, we fell. I wasn't even there when we fell. I'm going to get up and dust myself and I am going to decide my future on my terms. I will make sure that I live well, that my family lives well that I lift people up as I go, and we're going to change this country together. This is the Tanzanian that I know had Mwalimu been alive today, that he would give his all. If he had a few extra years, that he would give those years to see stand. Because it is this generation of Tanzanians, it is this crop of Tanzanians that will one day create this which is only a vision right now, which is just a dream. Tanzania as an economic power, driven by confident, professional, tenacious, patriotic, and altruistic entrepreneurs. I see this in the making. This is happening. This is coming. Mungu ibariki Tanzania. Mbarikiwe ndugu zangu. Asanteni sana.